If you've used computers that made sounds like this, or better yet, this, there's a good chance you've heard of or used the X modem protocol. X modem was a simple protocol that changed the world and it's still in use today. But if you were like me in the 1980s, how it actually worked was the magical domain of the real experts. Us kids just didn't know how this thing functioned. Exponent was created in 1978 by Ward Christensen, who ran the software side of the world's first BBS, CBBS in Chicago. He worked with his friend Randy Seuss during the great blizzard of 1978 to develop the BBS and the protocol. The great blizzard of 1978 was one of the most severe blizzards in US history. And if you know anything about Chicago and the type of storms that are considered normal that come off the Great Lakes in the winter, this must have been truly extreme. Snow drifts reached 10 to 20 feet. In some ways like our current COVID crisis, as computer geeks, being locked in the basement with power and glowing screens can lead to a certain amount of innovation. And this is exactly what Mr. Christensen did. CBBS with X modem became a huge success and spawned an entire subculture, the BBS culture, of which I was a member and through which I met some of my best friends that I still know today. The BBS culture was for kids like me, just as real a social activity as the kids who played sports or hung out in front of 7-Eleven. What seems totally normal today, spending 24 by 7 in front of a screen talking to friends you might never meet, was concerning and definitely abnormal back in the 1980s. BBSs became a trend and soon every model of home computer had at least one or two BBS packages available. Terminal programs were dumb, very dumb, and modems were slow. That meant the majority of a BBS could be written in the basic provided with the machines. To implement X modem, however, you needed to use what we called ML or machine language, and this was the domain of the real wizards. On the Coco, we first saw this new X modem thing in a terminal package called MikeyTerm. At first, it was something mysterious with a strange name. Did I need a special X modem device to use it? Did I have to buy an X modem license? Pretty soon, we figured out what this was for. It meant we could finally transfer programs between friends without having to meet in person. And being relatively socially awkward, this was definitely a feature. So let's take a look at how X modem works. A Radio Shack color computer and a Tandy 1000 like I have here would be pretty typical partners in an X modem communication back in the 80s. Normally the session would begin when a user accesses the BBS's file section and decides to either upload or download a file. The sequence begins when the receiver sends a negative acknowledge or NAC character to the sender. The sender responds with a start of header or SOH character and then it sends the block number, which is one, and the inverse of the block number, which is 254. And this is the number 255 minus the block number that's being sent. This scheme of using the block number and its inverse is actually an elegant little hack. The reason being is that these two numbers will always sum up to 255. That makes it really easy to check whether or not these two bytes have been corrupted at all in transit. The data is then sent and then a checksum is sent at the end of that. The receiver confirms that the checksum is the one it expects, and if so, it replies with an acknowledge or ACK character. For the next block, the sender sends a start of header, and then it sends block number two, and the inverse of block number two, which is 253, the data, and the checksum for that packet. Assuming that the block is okay, the receiver sends another ACK character, and the process continues. However, if the checksum does not match what the receiver expects, the receiver sends a negative acknowledge character to the sender. The sender then replies with a start of header again, and the exact same block data that it just sent. Hopefully, after sending it a second time, the block is received successfully, and the file transfer can continue. Okay, it's time to do a bit of an experiment. Oh boy, an experiment! 
Let's download a file from the Radio Shack color computer to the Tandy 1000. I'm intentionally doing this download at 300 baud so it's easier to see what's going on. And we'll take a look at the data as it travels over the wire using the HP 4957 protocol analyzer. The first thing I need to do is select the protocol I want to use. So I want to use X modem and not X modem CRC. We click X modem and then we enter the file. This is the file with the shortest name in the directory. That's why I picked it and click enter. And so it now tells me there's 141 total blocks to download. And then I click the download button on the Tandy 1000 side. Then I have to select the protocol again. So X modem on this side. And I have to type in the file name again. Ed dot docs. I can name this whatever I want. This is what it'll be saved to locally. File well, already exists. Well, looks like I've downloaded this before. And the file's now being downloaded. Takes a moment for it to synchronize. And the blocks are now being sent. So we can see on the protocol analyzer the data coming down. And you can see there's readable text as well as embedded characters in that feed. On the black background, you can see the data coming from the sender, which is the color computer. And on the white background, you can see the data that is coming from the Tandy 1000. And you can see in there, every block from the Tandy 1000, there's an ACK or acknowledge character at the end of the block. Then we get our SH, start a header. Then we get our block numbers, the inverse, and the data. So all in all, it's a pretty simple protocol that allows for reliable binary data transfers. A critical part of the design of Xmodem is the checksumming process. There are actually two methods to perform this. An improved version of Xmodem utilized a cyclic redundancy check, or CRC, which provided much better error checking at the expense of being a lot more complicated to implement. The original Xmodem used an elegant 8-bit checksum that worked very well for normal modem communications and was really the most popular method until more powerful machines like the IBM PCs became popular. I'm going to leave out the discussion of the CRC calculation and focus on the original checksum algorithm. We'll show how the checksum is calculated while sending a short string of characters. Our first character is X. That's decimal 88. And then our next character is M, which is decimal 77. This sums up to 165 in decimal. 165 becomes our new checksum value. Then the next character is O, which is decimal 79, and our checksum is now 244 decimal. Next, the character D comes along. This is decimal 68, and the sum is now 312. Okay, this is where some of the magic happens. To get the checksum, we need to subtract 256 from 312. We can either do subtraction or a modulo to get the correct value. After doing this, the result is decimal 56. If we look at the binary for 56, it is exactly the same as 312, except the one that was in bit 9 is now gone. On an 8-bit processor, if you add two numbers in an 8-bit register and it overflows, it just throws away the carried bit. This means the checksum can be calculated in a single machine instruction, and the instruction does not have to worry about the input values. The same code is used no matter the inputs. The simplicity of its overall design is one of the main reasons for Xmodem's success. And this is a key example of that simple elegance in action.
Thanks for watching this video and I hope that if you like this kind of content, you consider subscribing. Also, I'd like to thank my Patreon subscribers for their support. They really inspire me to create more videos and they also make me feel guilty when I'm not putting out enough content. Thanks again and hope to see you soon.